Very often when one sees paintings of a religious nature, the people in the paintings, especially the righteous people, have this halo around their head. They have a certain type of a glow. Well, I would say that the first time that we discover this concept is in this week's Pasha, Pasha Kitisa, where the Torah tells us about the terrible sin of the golden calf, but also the repentance of the Jewish people, their forgiveness, their atonement. Moshe goes up onto the mountain to receive the Torah. He comes down after 40 days. He sees the nation worshipping the golden calf. It's a disaster. He breaks the tablets. He goes up for a second period of 40 days to plead with God. God says, fine, I'll forgive the Jewish people. Go down, hew out a new set of tablets, come back up. He goes up for a third period of 40 days and he comes down with a new set of tablets. And the day that he comes down is the 10th of Tishrei, Yom Kippur. And it's a day of incredible joy because the Jewish people have been forgiven and their sin has been atoned. And the Torah describes Moshe Rabbeinu Moses coming down the mountain, ki karan or panav. And it says that the, the, he, the skin of his face is glowing. He has karne hot. He has beams of light, often mistranslated as horns of light. But he has these beams of light coming out. And these beams are so incredible that the Jewish people can't look at him. They can't look at his face. And he has to put a veil over his face, except during the time that he's teaching them Torah. And the Midrash has a very cryptic comment. And it says, where did Moshe merit to have this glow, this halo, if you like, on his face? Where did it come from? And the Midrash gives the following very strange answer. And it says, Hashem took the ink that was left in the pen and he put it on Moshe's face and Moshe's face glowed. Well, what does that mean exactly? The ink in the pen? And isn't ink something that's dark, it's black, it's not going to cause a person's face to glow? What does it all mean? And I once heard a very beautiful explanation of this cryptic saying of our sages from my Rosh Hashiva, Rabbi Azra Chaim Golfan of Blessed Memory. And he told us as follows, that the rabbi that he had learned with, Rabbi Mordechai Gifter of Blessed Memory, who as later the Rosh Hashiva of Tells, had gone from America before World War II to study in the Tells Yeshiva in Lithuania. And on a particular Shabbat, he had gone to another town for the ufruf of one of his colleagues, one of his friends, who had also come to learn from America. And the name of the town was Vinuta. And living in Vinuta was a great rabbi. His name was Rabbi Ezra Altshila. And in fact, his great-great-grandson was the cousin of our shul. And this rabbi, Ezra Altshila, he was the rabbi of Anuta. And on that Shabbat that they were celebrating the wedding of this young American who had come to learn in Lithuania, he told them a number of incredible divrei Torah, a number of wonderful new interpretations. And one of them was on this particular very cryptic message. And rabbi Ezra Altshila said as follows, what does it mean that Hashem took the ink in the pen and he put it on Moshe's face? And he explained as follows. If we look in the Torah, a little bit later on in uh, the book of Bamibah, it speaks about the incident where Moshe's brother and sister, Miriam and Aaron, spoke Loshon Hora about him. They said something about him that was inappropriate. And the Torah says that it didn't really bother Moshe at all. Why? Because Moshe was anav ma'od mikol adam. He was the most humble of all people. And if we look at that word anav, humble, usually it is spelt ayin, Nun, Yud, Vav. But the Yud is missing. It's misspelt as, as if it's not accurately spelt on that word humble. The Yud is missing. So what happened? This is what Rabbi Ezra Altshul explained. Hashem was dictating to Moshe the Torah. And he said to Moshe, you have to write down in the Torah that Moses was the most humble person. But this created a terrible conflict with Moshe. How can he write that he's humble? How can the most humble person write that he's humble? It's a contradiction in terms. Moshe felt uncomfortable. And therefore he felt he couldn't write the word down, the word anav. So he left out the letter yud. And because he left out the letter yud, that means his quill, which was specially design, designed by Hashem to have just enough ink to write the entire Sefer Torah, that quill had a tiny little bit of ink. And Hashem, as it were, took that tiny bit of ink and he put it on the face of Moshe. And that's what made the face of Moshe glow. What is the meaning of that? That only people who are truly humble and are not there for themselves, for their own ego, for their own purposes, but they're there for the community. They're there for others. That's what Moshe Rabbeinu was. 
they deserve to have this glowing light coming from their face. It was that tiny ink that he left in the pen because he could never write about himself, I am a humble person, that allowed him to be the greatest, the greatest leader of all time. And really, as the Talmud tells us, Hashem says about haughty people, I can't live in the world with them. If there's a haughty person, it's either me or them. Because a haughty person is full of themselves. If you're so full of yourself, you can't take in from other people. Moshe was completely empty of himself. And that's why he was able to take in all of the Torah of Hashem and to bring us the Torah that for all times we refer to it as the Torah of Moshe, as the Torah of Moses, the most humble of all men. I wish you a Shabbat Shalom.